Hi traders and welcome to the technical analysis market wrap on Friday the 13th of May. Well, is it going to be a Black Friday? We've certainly seen a black week in a lot of the markets. The key indices are getting smashed and a lot of the all the big major players in the currency space are also really moving. So we'll jump straight into the charts and see if we can find any trades for today and early into next week. All right, we'll start out here with the Aussie USD, as we always do. A big, big move. As you can see, this is a daily uh, candle, obviously. We've seen a very big, big breakdown uh, past that our key level at around that 69, 20, um, 30 area. You can see we had some pretty good interaction. You've got to go to the smaller time frame to really see it. But... Um, the last couple of days has provided some pretty good trading. You can see that we've had some nice patterns form inside that channel that we thought would be support and resistance, which is good. Um, but then it did come down, tested the low, uh, and then down she came. And as you can see, you know, we, we did reach a low of nearly 68.30 actually. So it's, it's been yeah a, a good old fashioned smashing. There's a little bit more room to go before it actually hits its actual new support. We'll look at that in a second. But as you can see though, it has come down in a, a very orderly fashion. In without, Even though it looks like it's been smashed on the daily, you can see that it's actually come down pretty systematically. If you go down to a 15 minute chart, uh, you can see that all of the opportunities that we always talk about are basically playing out. Touch the 20 moving average, sell down to the next uh, support zone and onwards and upwards. So realistically, the only way you would have been able to trade this properly, of course, is if you were actually trading uh, the session that it was actually falling in. It would have been difficult to actually get involved uh, in any other way unless you were actually going for a longer term position. But, you know, when you are actually scalping and you are seeing the market do what it needs to do, uh, it is a beautiful thing. And you can see that even in a, a chaotic market where we're falling very heavily, it still gives us all the opportunities that we look for to actually get in. So the next support is we have to go out to a weekly to actually find it. And let me bring up the uh, support line here. It's around this level here. And and look, the main reason for that is we can see here, it's right on, it's basically 68.20 actually. I'm, it's hard to line up exactly on a weekly. But this is the level where it, it actually did touch and bounce off. As you can see, um, we had very uh, long support back in 2015. It touched that level and bounced off very aggressively. And it also came down in a very, very heavy manner, just like it has now touched the um, the level and then bounced off quite aggressively. We saw that big pin bar there basically bang straight up again. Uh, we saw this level interact underneath it, and that is actually the next level of if it does happen to break this level. So we are, what I'll do, I'll actually put the line on and then we'll go to the smaller time frames to actually really isolate it and break it down. Okay, because 6720, we're going down in increments of 100. Um, and it's for a very good reason, because that's what the market actually did. So... You know, from a, a daily standpoint, it, it pretty much did reach that target. But the next zone, if this one does break, is the 67.20. And realistically, again, that's a very, very strong level of support. All of these levels are going to be defended quite heavily because they have been in the past and they're very important zones for the Aussie USD. So really, what we can see here is a bit of a, a pullback. We can see that the market's actually trying to retrace a little bit and find a little bit more stability, um, which is perfectly fine. We don't need the market to sell off crazy. This is you know, similar to what it did over here. Uh, if it comes up and touches this level here, we're going to probably find some sort of resistance there and effectively be able to trade these channels. One of these channels is eventually going to hold up and give us trading opportunities in between it. So it's really just waiting for which one you're going to do. But from a scalping standpoint, you know, just try and trade inside the levels that we've got here until we do actually get a breakout. If we get below the 68.20 um, and it closes down there, start to look for the 67.20 as your next target. But of course, if it does get above the 69.20 and starting to, and by then it has to get above the 20 moving average as well. If it closes above there, especially on a four hour, then you can start targeting the 70 cent mark again, which is obviously the uh, the biggest of the, of the zones. So that's a pretty easy one to trade really. Just stick within the boundaries until it actually breaks one and then move to the next boundary. I think we've got this well and truly trapped and it's going to give us some good opportunities. Okay, US dollar CAD, uh, yeah, this one did eventually break through uh, the um, level that we've been talking about for ages, finally got through, and as you can see, yeah, it effectively got to the yeah, 30, 80. Yeah, look, we knew 130 was on the, on the cards, there was no problems there. It did push up a little bit higher, as they, as they often do, very often they go past, when they've been eyeing up a target, they do quite often go past it. If you did take your profit at 130 or just above 130, don't ever be disheartened by that, uh, that's, the, that's the trade. That's what we were looking for, and that's what we got. You should be happy with the with the move. It was a pretty reasonable move, and you know, eventually they do come down and actually retest that zone. You know, now what we don't want to be doing is either looking for that reversal, 
So if we get a, a bit of a reversal on a smaller time frame, like let's just say um, the one hour, we can see that we're starting to struggle at this level now. If we start to trade below the moving averages again uh, and below the 130, probably more importantly, and we see a change of trend and we see a lower high and lower low sequence, which may kick in, then we can start targeting those uh, levels that actually gave us trouble to begin with around that 129 and 128. But this has been really, really good trading on um, on the CAD. I mean, it, same deal, even though it looks like a big breakout. You know, if you were trading the one hour, you know, look at all the pullbacks. You basically, you couldn't really get it wrong, uh, especially this little period here you know, from the one. Yeah, this is the um, the one hour period. You can see here, if you were trading the 20 moving average pullbacks, you can see that you got it nearly every time and yeah, you effectively got it to the 130 without too much trouble. So hopefully you're able to take advantage of that because we have been looking for that for several weeks, as you know. So again, what we're looking for now is a break either down, so a lightning bolt to the way down and below the 130, then we start targeting these zones again, uh, the 128 probably 70 is the first real target uh, for it to go short. But failing that, if it looks like it wants to push higher, uh, we know where our, our boundaries are. If it comes back and retests to 130 and then swings, so say for instance, if it comes back and then pulls it up again and closes the lightning bolt on the way up on the one hour, then we've got our signal to effectively start to go long on the CAD. So I think good trading either way and it's been very, very good to us. All right, US dollar, yen. Um, yeah, look, this one tested the highs. Uh, it, it just seems to keep pushing higher. Uh, it's come back now, touched the 20 moving average, and it's retraced uh, back behind. It hasn't touched the, the 20 for a little while, as you can see, you know, not since February, really. Um, and as soon as it did touch it, it went through, but it has pulled back. So interesting to see where this one closes. We haven't been trading under here for a little while. I still think it's starting to probably start to get a little bit tired at this point. Um, at, at our best case is probably to push to the highs of 131 again. Uh, if it does that from the 20 boundary, that's probably the zone that we're looking for. But failing that, if we break the 20 moving average and start to tr uh, trend down, so if we go to the smaller time frames, if we start to get a series of lower highs and lower lows, you can see now we've got a cross, a 2050 cross on the four hour, which is important. We haven't had that since way back at 115. That tells you how significant that is. Um, I'd be looking probably for a test of this if, if price gets up and tests the moving averages from below, uh, which is also a mini re roll reversal zone. I'd be probably looking for shorting opportunities around that 129.50, and then we start targeting some of the levels that actually got us up there in the first place. Of course, if it gets up there and breaks the 131, um, then it's hell for lever again, and we start looking long opportunities. I like this one because yeah, we've got opportunities either way, but my preference is probably to get a bit of weakness now and yeah, start to actually pull back some of this big move and maybe get it back to the 126s, 127, so we can uh, look for some reversal patterns and start to get up and trade that zone. But I, I think it looks weaker than it does strong at the moment. Uh, and realistically, on the four hour, if it breaks those moving averages, uh, we will have probably a couple of shorting opportunities. Uh, and if it starts to go long, again, we've got a good target. 131 uh, is the target that we're aiming for. Uh, let someone else break, do all the hard work and break the 131. And if it does that, then we'll reassess. But good trading again on that one. All right, dollar index. The unstoppable dollar index. Uh, you can see it broke. It, it did consolidate here for you know, basically a couple of weeks. Uh, it broke through and broke through with a bang. Now it's gone um, the 104.66, but of course, yeah, we'll jump into the one that really affects the euro in a second. But you can see this is just going from strength to strength. Um, dollar strength is just rampant at the moment, running rampant. Uh, that's a that's a very serious break. Yeah, 104.66 is a very very serious move up. Um, which probably surprises me a little bit that the, the US dollar uh, yen wasn't you know, as strong as, as it could have been. I know it's not directly completely correlated to it, but you know, as you can see in the euro, the euro is getting absolutely tanked. Um, and I look, I, I love it because it's actually doing all the technical things, even though it's been effectively selling off, you know, for forever, it seems, you know, since last year. Um, you can see that it's come down in a very, very orderly fashion, extraordinarily tradable patterns everywhere, pullbacks to the 20 everywhere. Uh, it consolidated this zone. It's, it was either going to go up or it was going to go down. That's the great thing about it. It wasn't like it was going to muck around and probably hang here. It hung around here for, for enough. If it was going to break the 20 moving averages and break up past the 106.60, then it was going to look long to the 109 again. But if it did break down like it did, uh, as you can obviously see, with the dollar index going yeah, absolutely rampant, this is co the complete um, opposite. And, you know, 103.50, like bang. That is just, you know, like it is really, really pushing the boundaries now. This is... This is the last line of defense, uh, right where it is now. You can see you have to go back a long, long way to actually even find support here, to make a case for it even. Uh, but you can see this is a weekly chart. We had a month of action here where every single candle rejected. You can see the big wick right through here. 
big, big rejections um, through this area here. So this is, if it doesn't stop here, um, yeah, if it does actually go through this zone and um, continues on, uh, you can expect that parity is not very far, well, not parity, 100 is not very far away, okay? Um, it seems like we call everything parity when it gets to 100, but that is, um, that is a, a possibility, okay? Uh, and, and a big possibility if it doesn't hold at this zone. The monthly really highlights how important this area is. You can see all of the touches through there, all of the touches through there. It is one of the most important zones on the euro uh, in recent time. And I, when I say recent, I'm talking about the last, since the inception of the euro. So that's that's how significant this level is. So we're going to be watching it with great interest, uh, to, to say the least. You can, yeah, like I said, this is these are monthly charts. This is no nonsense. Like you're talking about nearly a year of action here or, or three quarters of a year of action at this level here, okay, way back in 2017. So very, very serious level. Um, again, though, what it does from here, it's going to be the, the catalyst, whether it actually goes down to 100 or whether it picks up and starts to retrace some of these um, big drops. My, I haven't even got a preference here because realistically, um, the, the dollar index is doing things that it hasn't done in so long as is the euro. So realistically, we would, we would be, uh, we'd have to be very cautious if we were trying to pick a direction, but I like it because you can trade it either way. Um, I'm happy to trade either side of it. If it go, continues to go short, um, that's fine as well. But just be aware that we are at a zone now that um, is historically extraordinarily strong. They're not going to let it go past this zone um, without a fight. Uh, as you can see, even this zone was very, very strong. And that's, yeah, like I said, that doesn't look like much, but that is, you know, two, two and a half weeks of very, very strong rejections. And we had a lot of great scalping in between. So I think that's what was so great about that. If it if it comes back up and tests this level from below, does a roll reversal, we've got a very easy target to aim for, which is around that 103.60. Uh, but of course, if it continues on and it keeps testing the moving averages on the smaller time frames, just keep doing it until um, it eventually says no. So just really do what price action says here. Uh, if it gets above this level again and a daily close above it, then we've got a very easy range to trade into. Similar to the Aussie, we've got ranges that we can trade into, uh, just scalp and basically work with the market there and you're not going to go too far wrong. All right, the, the big one, the S&P 500. Um, yeah, this one's just been an absolute bloodbath. I talked about Friday the 13th being the, the Black Friday. We've had the Black Week, really. Uh, what's going to happen on the weekly close is going to be extraordinarily important this week. Uh, it's going to be, the daily closes are important, yes, but, and as you can see, we've had a bit of a, a retrace today. It had, it got down to as low as 38.60 on the S&P, which is a very, very big move down. Uh, as you know, I don't, have to, I don't have to hide any secrets there, but it has pulled back a lot. Okay. Like it's come back effectively, you know, we're talking about 40, 66 points. So nearly 2% um, retrace. Okay. Depending on where it closes, of course, I mean, it is about to close. Um, so realistically, how this candle closes, it's going to probably close fairly similar. I can't expect too many uh, different change ups now. So you're going to say that's a bit of a rejection off a very, very key key level. 38.50 to 39.50 is a very, very big zone for this, okay? So it's not like um, we're surprised that it, it, it did pause here. But in saying that, we're not surprised it is here either. We've been talking about this for weeks and weeks now. You know, all of you who, who listen to this channel uh, know that we've been talking about the short down of this level. So we're certainly not surprised. It's really working out now where it's going to pause and um, actually start to pull up again. It may well be this level, or it may be the uh, 35.50. I think if, it, if we do break down past the, um, the level here, 38.50 is going to be on the cards. Uh, and you know, again, we, we did draw a fib the other day on, on this one. And, um, and realistically, it's not even, I think it was a monthly fib. Uh, yeah, we did, did a monthly fib of the entire move, and it hasn't even reached the 38.2. Okay, so that we've got to be we've got to be mindful of that. The monthly has pushed past the twenty moving average, which is a big deal. Um, the weekly is all about the you know cross. If we if this weekly candle closes anywhere near where it is right now, that twenty and fifty are pretty much all but assured to cross. Um, we're just waiting for that to actually happen. This is why I say that the weekly close is a very very important close this week. It's close. It's important every week, but this week in particular because we've had yeah effectively what six weeks in a row where we've had big red negative candles. Not one of them has given us any confidence whatsoever. It all started here with the evening star pattern. Uh, a power, when, when you've got an evening star pattern on a weekly, that's a very very big deal. Okay, and um, and obviously it sold off far more than uh, anybody probably would have expected uh, in such a short period of time. I'm not surprised it's here. I'm probably just surprised it came here so quickly. Um, so what we're gonna what we're gonna see now, we're gonna look for the weekly close, see where it ends up. Uh, if it's in this, even if it's in this area here, that is still weak for me. But 
you know, it's at least it's sort of held up for one more trading day. If we get a close lower to the uh, 38.50 or even lower again, depending on what happens again on Friday uh, at New York, then that's going to set the catalyst for next week. If this is a big red candle closing on a slows and I wake up Monday morning and that's where it's at, like in the low 38s, I will be starting to set all of my traps down for the that 35.50 period because I think that's probably the area that um, it's going to try and get to. If it retraces from here and defends up, if we spend the next day going up and all of a sudden we're above 4,000 again, um, that does show some yeah reasonable bullish action to potentially stop this reversal uh, and start to push back up to the 4,200 again, which is this level here, which is also the 23.8. A 23.6, sorry, on the fib. So again, it's all going to come down to the weekly candle, but this has been a great trade. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people have got involved. I get a lot of emails saying so, which is awesome. Uh, and it's done the job. You know, it's come down to the levels that we wanted it to come down to. So we're all happy as traders, but now we want to see, um, yeah, the, the real sign now is what this weekly is going to do. So let's just see where the weekly closes. Um, if you are trading uh, the rest of the week, just be careful with your stop losses. We're still in a very volatile market. VIX is still through the roof. So just be careful with that. But it's been a fantastic week's trading. So I hope you've been able to take advantage of some really, really good moves. Have a great weekend, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you.